Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. There is no man, there is no woman who will become spiritual to God's standard without understanding prayer. Many people pray, but very few people understand prayer. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is important to be efficient in prayer. And since this is a prayer conference, I just thought to share a few things that can help us maximize our prayer adventure do you know why prayer meetings in many circles um, usually don't come with a lot of motivation two reasons one because many people do not get results from their prayer many people do not get results from their prayer generally speaking nobody leaves what works do you agree with me on that the moment you try or test a thing and it works, you are motivated to stay there. So the number one reason for the laxity in prayer extends to prayer meetings of all sorts is because the truth is most people cannot, they do not have consistency of results through prayer. And so because of that, they hardly have an appreciation for the prayer ministry. Instinctively, they know that is one of the requirements for a believer's growth and excelling. But since they have not gotten results there, they pay very less attention to it. The second reason is most people have not been taught that you are actually taught to pray. Prayer is not just something you do. Prayer like driving or any other spiritual adventure you are taught to pray there are people who learned how to drive without anyone driving them or teaching them and they may not know the mistakes they are making just because the car is moving in obedience until they face a situation that requires structured knowledge that's when they will find out that even though they've driven successfully for years there were things they did not know about driving for instance when they relocate abroad they will fail the driving test helplessly to their shame they say look i've driven from abuja to lagos many times how dare you fail me cheaply like this that is when they will realize that it's not just about moving a vehicle there is understanding most people pray some of them were born from prayerful families by prayerful families pass through prayerful circles but the truth is that not many believers have been taught to pray the disciples of jesus as the disciples of john they saw john attempt to mentor them in the area of prayer and they tried everything john said and they themselves began to pray they were frustrated at a point because their prayer was not producing power then they came to jesus according to luke's synoptic account and they said teach us to pray as john taught his disciples to pray so their issue was not prayerlessness it was inefficiency in prayer they were not getting results they were honestly praying saying whatever it is and it was not producing power but they noticed jesus he did not waste words every word had a return on that investment if he spoke to storms he returned with results if he spoke to situations he spoke to men he spoke to circumstances it was such an admirable sight to behold and they had to confront him one day say don't leave us this way teach us to pray bring efficiency to our prayer adventure are we together many believers will pray if they have answers through prayer many believers will not have to be coerced into prayer ministry prayer meetings you know cajoled and so on and so forth it is because most people are frustrated some indefinitely until they backslidden as far as prayer is concerned and then we pray all kinds of funny prayers and don't get answers one thing we need to know as a rule of thumb is that god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he only responds as his word allows there are rules of engagement even in the way god responds to man 
God does not respond to man emotionally he has submitted himself to his word himself the bible says he exalts his word even above his name above his office above his reputation so you would think that just because you are crying and you know lamenting god will be obliged to move he is touched with the feelings of your infirmity that is called compassion but he's moved by his word if god were moved emotionally the first people he will rescue are children not even you and yet you can watch children die and watch all kinds of catastrophic things happen in our world and here is a god who the bible calls an epitome of love with the all-seeing eye seated on his throne how could he watch such mayhem happen across the earth and not do anything about it it is the reason why trying to buy up sympathy spiritually will only end us in frustration there are rules that produce victory god is touched with the feelings of your infirmity but please listen to me as we delve into this subject of prayer he's only moved by his word not even the tears of jesus could stop that which had was written that from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain and that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin you will think the tears of his only begotten son not even the blood that was flowing from the lacerations could turn the heart of god as compassionate as he is he still watched his son die <laughs> are we together so the wise saying one day go better unfortunately does not work it consoles but it does not work it comforts but it does not work time will not change anything by default you will have to know how to engage the word even in prayer can we look at a few things about prayer thank you jesus just one scripture ephesians chapter 6 please we will read 17 and 18. contextually paul is wrapping up his discourse with the church in ephesus and he starts from verse 10 by saying finally brethren he says be strong in the lord he's giving them his final words now and he says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might are we together now yes now the book of ephesians is very interesting theologically because it contains according to many theological thoughts it contains about the richest truth as far as the believer's work is concerned paul took out time to give a sound exegesis as far as the believer's work is concerned he spoke about his the believer's position of advantage seated with christ he spoke about the work of the believer the character that befits a believer's experience he talks about the demonic forces that try to antagonize and resist believers and he teaches us how to fight against the wiles of the enemy and he's wrapping up his discourse from verse 10 he now says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might then he tells us to put on the whole armor not some the whole armor to the end that we may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies of the devil are we still together then he begins to describe that armory he says for your information know this as you sojourn that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness that are domiciled within the heavenly places to that end he begins to describe the believers armory take on the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand the evil day and then he says haven't done all to stand he begins his listing now he says stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth so truth is an armor righteousness is another armor next verse please he talks about the preparation of the gospel of peace as an armor he talks about the shield of faith then he says with this shield of faith you sustain the ability to quench all not some all the fiery darts of the wicked and then he says to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god 
and then he says verse 18 this is where we are finally arriving at now let's let's read together ready one to read praying hold on praying always with all prayer can we have niv if it's possible niv i'd appreciate niv niv says praying always with all kinds of prayer remember i i took out time to journey with you from verse 10 so that you understand the flow of the discourse don't forget his thoughts he's teaching you how to stand he's teaching you how to prevail he gives you an information that you are in a world where you are not alone are we together that there satan is there with his whole arsenal and now he's teaching you how to put on the whole armor of god so this scripture right there is a continuation the whole armor of god and then he says pray in the spirit on all occasions then he says with all kinds of prayer that means there are different kinds and different models of prayer are we together now did i give you my topic for this morning i'm teaching on scriptural prayer models scriptural prayer models scriptural prayer models from this scripture so the bible says to pray in the spirit on all occasions but then he says part of the strategy for you remaining victorious as a believer is to know and deploy all kinds of prayers please say after me all kinds of prayers hallelujah all kinds of prayers the bible says in mark chapter mark chapter 24 i believe now jesus was speaking to the the fig tree what scripture is that remind me he says verily verily i say unto you that whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and you shall find them that should be mark 11 and verse 24 the discussion starts from verse 21 then ends at 24 please give us 24 so he says whatsoever things ye desire did i get that right 24 thank you when ye pray there is a connection between desires prayer believing and their manifestation are we together in luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray always consistency to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 he says pray without ceasing doesn't mean to pray from morning till night it means be consistent that the prayer adventure becomes profitable when it is consistently practiced are we together james chapter 5 and verse 13 he says is any man afflicted let him pray let him pray let him pray a few verses afterwards he says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much even for jesus as our model jesus as our pattern man in luke chapter 9 from verse 28 to 29 at the mount of transfiguration the bible says verse 29 luke 9 29 as he prayed as he prayed as he prayed jesus prayed as he prayed john 17 and verse 1 jesus lifted up his eyes to the heavens and prayed john 17 verse 1 he prayed father the hour is come glorify now your son hallelujah that your son may glorify thee we see scattered through scripture that jesus prayed he invested time praying any believer who must reign and triumph exerting dominion over this cosmos must pray but prayer comes with understanding and so i want to examine with us very quickly at least four models of prayer the bible mandates that we pray with all kinds of prayer all kinds of prayer i'm hoping that from this discussion someone's prayer life will become richer because you'll be able to incorporate other dimensions that may not have been captured in your prayer life are you ready the first model of prayer according to scripture in no particular order is called praying in the spirit 
what you call deploying the prayer language of tongues praying in the spirit generally speaking praying in the spirit is not limited to praying in tongues but classically speaking every time we talk about praying in the spirit it is safe to assume the bible is talking about praying using the prayer language of tongues first corinthians 14 and verse 15 this is the first prayer model that i want to introduce to us as an advantage to all believers it's been a bone of contention for many years and especially among many religious circles as to the value or the necessity of sustaining the ability to pray in tongues this has been and sadly remains a, a you know a, a reason for argument but paul speaks here and he says what is it then he says i will pray with the spirit please follow carefully then he says i will pray with the understanding also clearly he tells you now that they do not mean the same thing he said i will pray in the spirit or with the spirit and then i will pray with my understanding the prayer language is not the same as the gift of diverse kinds of tongues this is where i think there's been an age-long confusion hallelujah because paul said in first corinthians when you read chapter 12 down to 13 and 14 he says do all speak with tongues and so most people will mistake in that to mean that the prayer language of tongues is not for everyone remember when you approach scripture contextually he was talking about the gifts of the spirit and he made a statement there that the gift of the spirit is to profit without that means the gift of the spirit is not necessarily for personal edification it empowers the individual to be a blessing to the church are we together now when he gets to chapter 14 now he says chapter 14 and verse 2 he says please give it to us verse 2 and then verse 4 first corinthians chapter 14 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue watch this now he speaketh not unto men immediately that tells you it is not part of the gift of the spirit he's talking about because all the gift of the spirit is to profit withal but this now he's speaking about tongues as a strategy for personal edification he says he speaks unto god for no man understanded him how be it he speaketh in the spirit and the spirit he speaketh mysteries very powerful hallelujah every believer that does not engage praying in the spirit will rob himself or herself will rob their destinies of many 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 dimensions of the blessings that come from prayer what is praying in the spirit or what is praying in tongues you are allowing the spirit of god please listen you are allowing the spirit of god to use your vocal cords your faculties to express prayer in a language you may not learn and understand how be it your confidence is that the spirit of god is number one called the spirit of truth so that even though you do not understand what you are saying you trust according to scripture that he's praying out through you the will of god are we together now and so when you begin to pray in the spirit it does not make sense to you looks like you are praying gibberish however the bible tells you that we do not know how to pray for as we ought to that means it is a limitation in all men we are limited we do not even understand what our problems are you can be praying for headache whereas the problem is a demonic attack and so the bible says that god in knowing this deficiency in men he supplemented that by granting us access to this prayer language hallelujah so when you engage in the prayer language it is important for you to know that you're not just fulfilling a religious ritual you are allowing the spirit of god to take advantage of your faculties and to express the will of god in prayer you can trust everything that is said in the prayer language because it is the holy spirit praying through you making intercession through you hallelujah and I remember many years ago when you know 
before God brought us to this level, I used to have the time to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit over people one by one. And most times, people's confusion was the fact that they thought their, their tongues were not sounding very professional. What is ba 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 ba? And what uh, you mean that thing is really, that doesn't really sound intelligent. Now, that's the problem with men. Because everything we believe must come through the sieve of intellect. And the Bible says a natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. The prayer language. Now, you see, in English, every time you want to tell me to step forward, you will say come. So C-O-M-E always means step forward. Doesn't necessarily have any other meaning. But in the realm of the spirit, just because your mind thinks you are repeating the same word, it doesn't mean you are saying the same thing. Do you understand this now? You need to understand this now. So you, the problem is the conflict between intellect and spirit communication. I give you an example of spirit communication. Two in the Bible, in fact. Number one is called Mene, Menetekel Ufersen. Did you ever read of something like that? Look at the, interpreting, the, the interpretation of just, just four letter words to the intellect. Mene alone means, oh king, you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. My God. So imagine what you say in 15 minutes of prayer. That was not a Babylonian language. It was a spirit communication. It took Daniel. He, was being in, he had to interpret it. Can I give you another one? Eloi, Eloi, Lamak, Sabak, Tanai. The Bible says, which being interpreted. It had to be interpreted. It's not a heavenly language. It was not a Jewish language. Eloi, Eloi, Lamak, Sabak, Tanai was Jesus communicating. The Bible says, which being interpreted. Did you see that? Which being interpreted. Nobody on earth would have been able to decipher what he said. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So don't, when you pray in the spirit, don't limit yourself to the intelligence of it. This man's tongue sounds nice. It looks like he's the real Holy Spirit walking with this guy. For mine, I don't know what kind of spirit took over me with this nonsense I'm speaking. The moment you allow the devil to do that, you have been robbed of an opportunity. Please look at me. How many of you laugh? You just laughed now, eh? You started laughing as a baby. Question, who taught you? Who gave you an opportunity to rehearse? How many of you cry? Have you ever taken note of the way you laugh or the way you cry? Have you ever been embarrassed by how you laugh or cry? It's the same thing. They are all languages. Laughter is a language. Crying is a language. Are you getting it now? So when people say, how can I communicate something I've never learned? Teach them that they laughed without rehearsal. They cried without rehearsal. Hmm. scriptural prayer models pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there are many things that happen at once when we pray in the spirit there's no time to be able to go into all that detail we are just taking this at an elementary level boy i will tell you three things that happens when you pray in the spirit number one you build power you build power acts chapter 1 and verse 8 you shall receive power acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 they receive tongues jesus never said you will receive tongues when the holy spirit comes he said you will receive power but in acts chapter 2 what they received was a prayer language that means there is a relationship between praying in the spirit and accessing spiritual power hallelujah if i tell you you will receive five thousand dollars and by the time you meet me, I give you a card. It should tell you immediately that there is a relationship between the promise I made and something within that card. Am I right on that? You don't throw away the card because most likely that card contains within it or is connected to an account that is worth $5,000. If you throw away the account because you are looking for $5,000 cash, you may have thrown away your money. So when he says you will receive power and what you receive is a prayer language, it means there is a relationship between engaging in that prayer language and accessing or releasing spiritual power. Do you agree with me on that? The Bible lets us know furthermore that when we pray in the spirit, we give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to draw into our lives the knowledge of the will of God. 
that no man knows what is in the heart of man except the spirit that is in that man so also no man knows what is in the heart of god except the spirit of god so as we pray we grant the holy spirit an opportunity to buy into the mind of the father and pull to your consciousness what the will of god is part time and per season for your life this is very powerful when we pray in the spirit among the many things we receive is the knowledge of the will of god concerning the various matters in our lives now the truth is that you may not find the answer to your problem directly from scripture you may not find your name you may not find in scripture whether you should live in the island or in the mainland are we together you may not find in scripture whether you should get into a dry cleaning business or a restaurant you may not directly find that but as you pray in the spirit among the many things that happens to you is that the holy spirit is able to buy into the wisdom of god and to communicate to you that which is consistent with your blueprint part-time it is risky to take many destiny defining decisions without praying in the spirit it will always look like you are correct till you find out you veered away from the will of god for many of us, the reason why we keep recycling seasons of pain is because we have not taken advantage of this provision. Are we together? Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Let me jump to the second model. Are we learning already? Is this helping someone's prayer life? So the next time the devil comes with his tricks to waste your time while you pray, you rebuke him and say if you did not come to me while i was laughing then don't come to me while i'm praying because it's a business between me and the father are we together now number two the second model of of prayer that many believers do not understand they do not even know it is prayer is declaring scripture in prayer my goodness my god declaring scripture in prayer not just quoting uh -uh. there is a difference and i'm going to show you now just because you are quoting scripture does not mean you are carrying out this model of prayer it is a powerful model of prayer to declare scripture psalms 107 2 and 3 please my god declaring scripture in prayer the bible says let the redeemed of the lord please help me say so what is the platform that allows them to say so let the redeemed of the lord say so what is this model of prayer please watch this so you take scripture and personalize it you put yourself in the experience of that word and you declare it are we together now the bible says to bring forth your strong reasons to bring forth present your cause your case saith the lord and he says bring forth your strong reason don't just say god are you not my father you can't be watching me like that that's not prayer that's not prayer let me show you how this model of prayer works that you can stand in the place of prayer and you are making prophetic declarations the lord is my light and my salvation I am blessed going out and blessed coming in. This is you praying now. Are we together? You become the prophet of your destiny at that point. And as you are speaking, you know, because the Bible says, Ecclesiastes, I believe, uh, chapter 8, let's try 3 or 4. That should be verse 4. Please, where the word of a king is. Did I get? Okay. Where the word of a king is. Is that in your Bible? There is what? Help me say power one more time where the word of a king is remember revelations 5 10 we have been made unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on earth that means every time you make these declarations you are not just speaking to the air you are programming realities over your destiny believe this i am blessed in the city and blessed in the country 
I obey the Lord and I serve him. Therefore, I enjoy prosperity, my days in prosperity, my years in pleasure. This is you declaring scripture. A thousand fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Are we together now? Yes. They may come against me in one way, but they will scatter in seven ways. I am the delight of the Lord. I shall not die, but live and declare. This is a prayer model. It's a prayer model. Most believers do not have a rich prayer life because they do not even know. Here's how the average believer prays. Father, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end and all. And you, you see that they don't believe what they are saying. Now, imagine you are God and somebody just comes, you are the Lion of Tribe of Judah, the Rose of Sharon, and the King of... What is Rose of Sharon? What is King of Kings? Now, I'm not being insulted, please. Don't, don't misunderstand me. And at the end of it, all that preamble is to really get to a point where they can bring down that pain and say, God, let's talk. This rent. <laughs> you sent manna from heaven. They wasted it. You sent another one. I'm only asking you for rent in jesus name and the person will live actually believing that he prayed no you didn't pray you lamented agreed you cried agreed you were superstitious agreed but it was not prayer are we together because i have set my affection on him ah look if you the the key to manifesting this model is that your word bank must be full if you do not understand scripture you cannot pray this model because this model is a direct lifting from scripture you just put yourself there and make that declaration if you are poor in the word you cannot pray this model of prayer hallelujah this is the kind of the model of prayer that you use to counter negative speakings did you get that now that someone looks at you and says everybody in this unit is a useless person immediately a scripture wells from you it's not that you have to reply that person immediately because there's wisdom remember so someone looks at you and says, the way you are looking sick like this, as if you are going to die soon. A scripture just comes up. And the moment you find a chance, no, I, I shall not die. I shall not die. They are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Are we together now? Yes. The advantage of this prayer is that it keeps reinforcing that truth to your consciousness. Because generally speaking, speaking reinforces the reality of thoughts. This is psychology. You agree with me on that? That anytime you speak a thing, the reality is still is crystallized in your mind again. You get up in the morning and you celebrate God. This is the day the Lord has made. Who made the day? Not the Lord and Satan. The Lord had made. Therefore, I rejoice. Anything fighting my joy today in the name of Jesus, I come against you on account of that declaration. That means my joy was factored in the making of that day. So you find two people who leave their homes in the morning. Please listen. On the streets of Lagos, someone leaves their home rejoicing and you say, how are you? They say, I'm fine. They are rejoicing. They get to the office and they say, listen, um, we decided to choose one person to send abroad and you are the person who came to our mind. And someone is frowning because a merry heart do it good like medicine. Are we together now? But that a broken spirit can dry up the bones. You get up in the morning and you declare in the name of Jesus, joy, joy, unspeakable, full of glory. No one disturbs my joy and peace today. You have already frustrated the person Satan has positioned. And every time God sees that something good is coming, you notice things begin to happen around your life, your office, you are angry, your son wants to do something, you are almost going to slap him. No, it's an attack. Because it is with joy we reap. Are we together now? <laughs> Scriptural prayer models. Number two, joy. Some of you right now, as you are here, God has been telling you cherub since yesterday. 
what God sent from heaven has refused to arrive. Do you know why? Because gloominess and sadness has created an embargo. You believe what I'm teaching you? Yes. I am the head and not the tail. Please say it. Amen. Believe what you are saying. Say I'm the head and not the tail. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible says you are above and not beneath. And while you are saying that because Satan is a deceiver, he will come and stand around the corridors of your mind and say with that rent issue, what did you say again? The head? Hear yourself and you say it again. I am the head and not the tail. And then you can add, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Temporal. The court case, temporal. The issue of shame and reproach, temporal. Still looking for the school fees of your son, but temporal. Yes, the visa was declined, but temporal. Temporal. But the things that are unseen, unseen, not unreal, unseen, not unreal, just because you cannot see it does not mean it doesn't exist. Hallelujah. The works of my hands blessed. God gives you a store. You don't go there and start quarreling and say, this lady, today's your last day. If you don't, mm -mm, it's too, you, you are already frustrating your path to growth. I'm showing you how to participate with heaven. You step into your mall or your store. Excuse yourself for a minute and close the door. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, everything I do is blessed. Is it in your Bible? Whatsoever he doeth, Help me, whatsoever he doeth, you step into that store. Lay your hands and say in the name of Jesus, God is bringing strategic people. Relationships are coming to me today. Not useless relationships, destiny defining relationships. Troublemakers are far from my destiny. God is bringing the right people. You get up and you expect favor. The Bible says his messes are new every morning. Have you received today's own? declaring scripture declaring scripture declaring scripture you get up and you find yourself that you you were somewhere you fell into a ditch and you died bring yourself back to life by waking up <laughs> that death in the dream should end there are we together and then you don't just get up and say God forbid God forbid is not prayer God forbid based on what you see the things that we keep saying that makes our prayer ineffective god forbid i know you are sincere but the realm of the spirit does not work like that there has to be a basis based on what the bible said i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing who is god speaking to this morning he said choose life choose life one of the ways you choose life is to verbalize it if I tell you choose between this flower and this monitor, one of the ways you, by pointing and then you can say, I choose the flower loud enough for me to hear you. You cannot tell me you choose the flower, then I give you this. It means I'm a deceiver. God says choose life. Choose life. Choose life. When men say there is a casting down, my declaration in the name of the Lord, and add your children in that confession, that they shall say there is a lifting up. I'm challenging every mother here. Don't keep quiet. This is not the time to keep quiet. Satan is looking for families he would destroy, looking for men that he would shred their testimonies. Do you know that the spirit of depression, the first thing that the spirit of depression does is it brings you to a point of silence find out people who are depressed they've come to a point where they've given up on life and they just keep quiet sir you know there is a way and it just keeps quiet after five minutes he says that person is almost dying but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Sing it one more time. 
But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, Many of you have heard me say, there are some of you, the only thing that comes out of your mouth is why is it that everybody hates me? First, you are a liar because it's impossible to be hated by everybody. You may have heard me say that even Satan is not hated by everybody. There are people who know that he's the devil and still love him. There are wives that agree to spend their lives with terrorists. Am I right on that? They know the person is an assassin, is a killer. And yet he went and met her parents and the lady was willing. Everybody cannot hate you. Is the devil deceiving you? And what you need is one person sent by God who loves you. One. How many? One. I tell you, one. How many people had to love Joseph to become a prime minister? Ten? Fifteen? One. 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 So when you get up in the morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, there has to be someone who delights in my son to hold his hands and lift him to be great. I'm calling that person forth by prophecy. When Jesus was born as a little baby, there were wise men that saw the stars. Is that in your Bible? The Bible says they took gifts of gold, of frankincense and myrrh, and they came to greet baby Jesus, not entrepreneur Jesus, not savior Jesus. declaring scripture declaring scripture declaring scripture go back home on your way home even if it's only one scripture you know weary life with that scripture speak it until it becomes a reality declare ye that thou might test be justified there are no assumptions in the spirit let me tell you the truth if i did not understand this model i submit to you by the integrity of god's word i would have died a long time ago a long time ago don't just accept everything that comes to your life build a garrison with the word and don't wait for someone to just speak it over you you are principally the first prophet of your life principally hallelujah the bible says i will multiply them they shall not be few. I will glorify them. They shall not be small. Speak that over your business. The Bible says in Psalm 112, parents, this is a women conference. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, who delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. As a mother, you would declare, I didn't give birth to pain. I, it's not my child that will send me to my grave. In the name of Jesus, every spirit trying to turn this boy to become a disappointment, I am not discouraged. I look beyond that stubborn child and I see a giant rising because the Bible says his seed shall be mighty it shall be mighty hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.